So my coping mechanism for this week has just been to keep We Rate Dogs playing cards in my top pocket. So whenever things are feeling a little bit heavy, I can just, ah, oh, ha ha, look. There's Blaze, and there's, and there's Hazel. Oh, and there's Benny. They're, they're just good dogs, Brent. They're just good dogs. Here's some wrestling news. A released WWE star is upset with the Drake Maverick storyline. A Raw star is critical of a recent angle they were involved with and why Steve Austin versus Hulk Hogan will never happen. We'll get to that in a little bit. Oh, there's Maverick. Isn't he adorable? Oh, oh, and there's Ken I or Kenny. I love that beautiful doggo. And there, oh, here's the news. Uh, Leah Rush uh, back in the news today uh, discussing the Drake Maverick storyline from Wednesday night. This has been quite divisive uh, around wrestling fans because some believe it was a feel good moment at the end of NXT that saw a guy get his job back. Many believe that it's, it's been quite exploitative and a bit distasteful. Uh, one of those in that camp is Leo Rush. Now, Leo Rush was released at the same time as Drake Maverick back in April, but of course, uh, now that things have fallen the way they have, Drake Maverick is back in WWE with an NXT contract. Uh, Leo Rush, not so much. Leo Rush went to Twitter, posted several tweets about the storyline and said the following, are they gonna hire everyone back then? Kind of a slap in the face to use this as a shoot work, but I guess I'm not surprised. Super happy for anyone getting their job back, but damn, real trauma and a lot of others were a part of this. I wish I was still a child, just staring at the bright lights on the TV screen, being a fan, instead of being so self-aware of corporate. Literally making a mockery of legitimate firings. And many people have thought along this line, because this whole thing genuinely started as Drake Maverick losing his job. But the groundswell of support saw Drake Maverick hired back, and instead of acknowledging that he was hired back, they turned it into a storyline. And that is where the lines have blurred. And I think, you know, and that's the big reason why people are upset, because Drake Maverick, to many, sort of cried these crocodile tears for the last few weeks. But as I said in the news yesterday, and as I said in Graded yesterday, I can't, I can't stand by it. Like, it's, I just, I'm happy he's got his job back and they told a compelling story with a feel-good ending. My heart goes out to those who were fired in April. Devastating, and, and that, doesn't, that doesn't stop being a terrible day for wrestling because Drake Maverick got his job back. That day still sucked, and there is still ramifications for many, but it's good to see Drake Maverick working in WWE still. I'm a big fan of Drake Maverick. Uh, Triple H addressed the Drake Maverick situation on a media call ahead of NXT TakeOver in your house this Sunday and he said the following, we already had the tournament booked out and I believe it was a little bit of a jumble but we already had it promoted. Then the releases happened, which is horrible. No one wants to see anyone lose their job, especially in the world right now. A lot of companies around the world are having to make tough business decisions to ensure that they're still there. He was given the option of continuing the tournament and wanted to prove he could still be here. If you've met him and you know him, he's one of the most passionate guys and loves WWE. Couldn't be a better guy. As we said when the release happened, it wasn't like he was involved in anything, it just happened. But through the process of this tournament, he's captured people's hearts and imaginations. He earned that spot. It was already out there in the biggest way possible. You either ignore it or you turn it into something. So we turned it into something based off him and his performances. I'm personally thrilled for him that he can continue to do what he loves and dreams about doing. I am thrilled we were able to get where we did. So that's Triple H just standing on things. I'm sure Drake Maverick is over the moon with it as well. Uh, worth taking that into account uh, when uh, you come at Drake Maverick uh, for, for the decision that he's made to stay with the company. Like, I'm genuinely over the moon that Drake is still part of WWE. Uh, yeah, and I can see it from the other side, maybe a touch distasteful uh, to, to do it around the, the, the releases in April. But here we are, it's wrestling, isn't it? So how did NXT fare ratings-wise on Wednesday night? Well, 
both AEW and NXT were down, but not bad numbers considering uh, the eyes of the world were on the news channels mainly. So AEW, 730,000 viewers, down 11% from last week. NXT only down 2.2, sitting at around an average of 715,000 uh, for the go home show for TakeOver in your house. Um, this is, oh gosh, this feels like the closest they've been in quite some time in terms of numbers. I think still with all that was going on uh, this week, it's been a very news heavy week outside wrestling, obviously. Uh, for wrestling to still pull in nearly one and a half million viewers on a Wednesday is still great going. Uh, obviously, AEW wins again. Meanwhile, on Monday Night Raw, Bobby Lashley gearing up for a showdown with Drew McIntyre at Backlash. He got a chance to speak to Digital Spy about his recent storyline with Rusev and Lana and Liv Morgan, that whole love rectangle thing that they were doing. And um, we all have our own opinions on it. Uh, Bobby Lashley has some too. He said the following. I don't think it had a proper conclusion. I think there was so much we could do. We had a full head of steam. People wanted Rusev to rip my arms off and beat me with them. I really don't know what happened to tell you the truth. I think we were at the point where the revenge needed to happen and it didn't. I don't know where we could have went or where we were going with it. I just wish I could have seen, had the match that I wanted to have with Rusev. I've seen him in some great matches and I think I could have had one with him. It did feel like it missed that big blow off match. They had the tables match at TLC, but it needed something else. I really like it was, it just sort of, it went out with a, you know, it went out with a like it or not. It went out with a whimper, not a bang. They could have just had that one blow off match. It just sort of fizzled and, and now Rusev is away. No doubt planning something massive very soon. Spending a lot of time on Twitch at the moment. I quite enjoy watching Rusev crushing on video games. Bobby Lashley's new manager, MVP, has been addressing his situation in WWE recently as well. Uh, so it was reported by a few sources, including PW Insider, that MVP uh, is now no longer working as a producer for WWE and he's back as a full-time wrestler. MVP addressed this kind of sort of via Instagram, uh, put out a... Uh, a post on Instagram, just big, just big letters saying, please do not believe what the dirt sheets tell you about me. If you don't hear it from me, it's not true. There you go. Read into that what you will. I mean, it's, it's, it's there quite literally in black and white. Some news from around the wrestling world now. Pro Wrestling Noah are going to be having their annual Masawa tribute show on the 14th of June in an empty arena. Every year they honour founder of Pro Wrestling Noah, Mitsuhawa Misawa, and this is going to be the weirdest one ever in front of no fans. Uh, DDT Pro are putting on Wrestle Peter Pan at last. This was meant to happen a short while ago, but then obviously the pandemic happened, so it's going to be a weekend event, uh, night one and night two uh, this weekend, very similar to how WrestleMania rolled this year. Night one uh, featuring the two matches I'm very excited about, right? The DDT versus Pro Wrestling Noah match, as well as a last man standing match between uh, Takashita and Yoshihiko, who is, of course, if you know your wrestling, everybody's favorite wrestling doll. There, there they are. There they are. Find Yoshihiko's match with Kota Ibushi online. Fight forever or until you deflate bad absolute badass absolute badass night two will feature mma star shinya aoki defending their extreme title and masato tanaka defending the open weight title but um just want to point you in the direction again of yoshihiko star of the show if yoshihiko doesn't make wrestler of the week with jack next friday livid quite frankly livid and game changer wrestling are going to be running a show in front of crowds for the first time in quite some time uh, it's going to be an outdoor show in indiana and there's details about it on their twitter page fans uh, are invited uh, to bring their own chairs along if they want to sit down uh, obviously provide face masks they must be worn if you don't have a face mask they'll be providing them and also they've asked all fans to respect social distancing uh, as they'll only be filling 50% capacity of the area. I'm really happy to see GCW start to get the ball rolling again. It's been a bit of a nightmare year for GCW. They had a whole litany of shows planned for WrestleMania weekend. And then obviously what happened happened and all of that was wiped out. So they're still trying to get back on their feet from this. And Game Changer Wrestling do put on uh, some really incredible shows across the board uh, with representation for everybody. Big fan of GCW. 
and I'm excited to see them start to move back in a positive direction. They very much deserve it. Bobby Lashley, but not Bobby Leesley. When it comes crashing down, it hurts inside. Not my words, the words of somebody doing bad DIY and the words of Hulk Hogan's theme music. And Jim Ross was chatting on Grilling JR about why we will never see Hulk Hogan versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. This was something that was teased a couple of times over the years to the point where even Hulk Hogan did a, did a promo like teasing the match on Monday Night Raw never happened. Uh, JR shed a little bit of light on why that didn't happen on his podcast recently saying Austin had it in his mind that Hogan style and Austin style were like oil and water. He just didn't feel the chemistry. Austin was never about having good matches. Austin was about having great matches. He knew better than anybody else in the world who he could work the best with. And Hogan wasn't on that list. Steve could be wrong too. I'm not saying that Hogan and Austin couldn't have a good match, but look at the match Hogan had at WrestleMania 18 with The Rock. Steve is a stubborn guy and just didn't feel it. That's why we are trying to explain in meetings with these guys is there is there is a new sheriff in town and his name is Stone Cold. It's not Hulkamania anymore but if we could use Hulkamania in a bitter way or in an angry way maybe we could get a Wrestlemania out of it that was the idea but it never came to fruition it didn't happen because Steve didn't push for it I believe Hogan probably would have gone along with it because it would have been a great payday and he could have worked with Austin but it sounds as if Austin wasn't uh, particularly a fan of working with Hogan so uh, cross that one off the list of matches that you'll never see to be honest with you if it was gonna happen it would have happened ages ago I don't think either guy is is willing mentally or physically uh, to take part in that particular one. I don't think there's enough Saudi Arabia money that you could throw at Hogan or Austin to make that dream match come true. That's your news for Friday. Made it to the weekend, and we're all a little bit frayed around the edges, aren't we, after this week. Uh, if you can take one thing away from this week, if you can do nothing else, be good to each other, honestly. Be kind to each other. This is, this is, a, this is a time on our planet that I don't think we'll ever see the likes of again. I certainly hope we don't. And if you, if you at the very least can be good to people, then we're already on the way to recovery. And if you have struggled this week, you're not alone. This has been a week that has tried the best of people. Just keep on going. And if in doubt, keep pictures of dogs in your top pocket. It will most definitely help. Ah, oh, there's Lewis, look at him. Beautiful little thing. Oh, there's Natasha. Natasha's in the sand. That is lovely. Oh, and Hugo is dressed like humans. He's dressed like people. Stay safe. Me and Aspen, we love you. Bye.